today, I'm gonna recap second season of 2011 American horror series, called The Walking Dead. Link for the rest of the seasons in the description and the first comment. The second season begin in Atlanta, Rick is up on a rooftop, conversing with Morgan through a walkie-talkie, although Morgan may not actually be listening. The sheriff tells him, the CDC was a bust. We gotta move on. It turns out they are all heading to Fort Benning, a distance of 125 miles. Darrell rides his motorcycle, and everyone else drives in a truck and RV. Rick and Lori reminisce about a past family trip to the Grand Canyon, while Shane assists Andrea in setting up her gun, which was a present from her dad. But their journey is disrupted when the road is blocked by cars filled with corpses. The caravan weaves through the traffic, until the RV suddenly stops working. The survivors are obliged to pause, if only for a short while. They make the most of their circumstances by scrounging for edibles and supplies. Shane, however, is quite pleased with the find, particularly when he uncovers a truck containing water cooler tanks. He impulsively decides to take a shower. Subsequently, Rick notices a walker in the distance, which he peers at through his rifle's scope. Swiftly and silently, Rick tells the scavenging survivors to crouch beneath the vehicles as the zombies pass by in a matter of intense seconds. Sadly, T-Dog gashes his arm on a vehicle, causing it to gush blood. At the same time, Andrea is inside the RV and scrambles to hide in the lavatory as a zombie strolls in. She desperately attempts to recall how to construct her gun, and drops the components. Hearing the sound, the zombie bursts into the restroom. Dale, who has been sheltering on the RV's roof, drops a screwdriver down to Andrea who violently stabs the walker in the eye, putting it to death. Outside, a walker moves toward T-Dog, who is on the brink of losing consciousness. Suddenly, Darrell emerges and silently punctures the creature in the brain stem. He then drags a few corpses over himself and T-Dog until the zombies go past. Sophia, seemingly safe, begins to climb out from under the car. Unfortunately, this was a bad decision as a zombie appears and starts chasing her. She runs into the nearby woods, and Rick follows. Two walkers are after Sophia. But Rick gets to her first and urges her to hide under a fallen tree in a stream. He tells her that he will distract the zombies, and when he does, she should run back toward the road. Rick can't use a gun, or else all the zombies on the road will hear. Thankfully, the two zombies are fooled and go after Rick, who hides behind a tree with a large rock. He manages to overpower them, and as they pass by, he strikes their skulls with the rock. Sophia was eventually located to have gone missing. Rick, Shane, Darrell, and Glenn track her, but for some unknown reason her path veers off the road. Rick and Darrell carry on, while Shane and Glenn go back to the road to try to keep the rest of the group from panicking. Carl finds a bag of axes and knives and proudly shows them to Shane, who simply rebuffs the boy. When Lori confronts him, he explains that he intends to sneak away at the first opportunity. He can't stay near Lori anymore, it's too painful. Back in the woods, Darrell takes down a walker with a crossbow. Rick notices something strange. The zombie has flesh in its teeth. To find out what it was. Darrell guts the walker and dumps out its contents, it's a repulsive sight, but it yields results. It was only a woodchuck the zombie had for dinner. Rick and Darrell then take to the road and try to tranquilize Carol, who is in a near panic. Rick clarifies that leaving Sophia alone was his only choice but that they must wait till morning to keep looking. The following morning, Darrell arranges the search team and reluctantly consents to bring Carl who states that he's her companion and can be of assistance. Meanwhile, Andrea confronts Dale about what happened at the CDC. She is enraged that Dale did not give her the choice of death. He is speechless, wounded and perplexed. The search party then marches into the woods and discover a tent. Inside is the decaying corpse of a man who has committed suicide. Darrell promptly puts the dead man's gun in his pocket. The group is startled by the ringing of bells in the distance. Following the sound, they find a pristine white church with a graveyard nearby. Upon entering, Rick, Darrell and Shane are met with zombies sitting silently in the pews. It's an incredibly eerie scene and the three of them take it upon themselves to eliminate the inhabitants. While this is happening, Glenn discovers that the bells are automated much to Darrell's disappointment. After the battle, the group takes a break and Andrea overhears a heated argument between Shane and Lori about leaving. In the end, Andrea comes to understand that Shane and Lori had a past and that Shane plans on leaving without informing anyone. Lori then goes inside the church and Shane spots Andrea, realizing that she knows his secret. Within the church, Carol pleads that her daughter be brought back unharmed. As they step out, Andrea informs Shane she desires to join him when he flees. Consequently, the group decides to part ways. Rick, Shane, and Carl remain behind to investigate the church vicinity. The rest head back towards the road. Darrell hands his secondary gun, the deceased man's firearm, to Lori prior to her leaving. Rick's turn to pray has now come, requesting a sign that he is acting correctly. The other survivors take a water break on the way back to the road. Lori scolds Andrea for giving her the evil eye because she has a gun so she hands it over. She then reminds Carol and the group to stop blaming Rick for the disappearance of Sophia and all the issues they've been having. The man isn't flawless, after all. Andrea, appearing repentant, returns the gun to Lori and they go on their way. In the woods, Rick, Carl, and Shane spot a male deer that pauses to observe them. 
Carl moves closer to the animal with curiosity as Rick and Shane admire it. Is this the signal Rick was praying for? Suddenly, a shot is heard and the deer gets hit, dead on the spot, with the bullet piercing Carl's chest. Rick cries out and dashes to his son's motionless body. Rick sprints, toting a seemingly lifeless Carl in his arms. Shane drags the man who shot Carl. An overweight and remorseful guy named Otis, Otis tells Rick to go to a nearby farmhouse and meet a man named Herschel Green. Rick sprints to the farmhouse, describing to Otis that he shot the kid and witnessing as Herschel, seemingly a physician, moves with haste. Carl has a feeble pulse. Shane soon shows up and wipes blood off the man he has known and been under for a long time. Rick is overcome with grief. Herschel believes he may be able to save the boy. Meanwhile, the rest of the survivors keep on scouring the area in an effort to uncover Sophia. Lori heard the gunshot earlier on and is concerned that Rick and Carl are somehow involved. Dale and T-Dog are back on the road, and T-Dog's injury appears to be especially bad. They opt to search the cars in the vicinity. At the same time, Rick is beckoned into the farmhouse to donate blood. Carl shrieks in agony before fainting. Herschel succeeds in removing a piece of the bullet. Rick is in a wild state as he desperately searches for Lori so she can join Carl. Shane attempts to calm his companion, recollecting Lori's response when Rick was shot. At that moment, Herschel appears and informs them Carl needs a medical operation and there might be the necessary supplies at the FEMA shelter in a nearby high school, but the place is probably overrun with walkers. Otis, blaming himself, decides to venture to the school with Shane to take the supplies in one of the Green's pickup trucks. Simultaneously, Dale and T-Dog have had no luck. T-Dog talks of being left behind due to being one of the weak ones and Darrell never forgiving him for what happened to Merle. He then suggests he and Dale go on their own, but Dale is shocked to find T-Dog is burning up with fever from his injured arm. Andrea hunts in the woods for Sophia when she's assaulted by a walker. In the nick of time, Maggie Green bursts out of the trees on a horse and annihilates the walker. Andrea is delivered. Maggie updates Lori, Carl's been shot. Lori hops on the horse with Maggie, who gives the others instructions to the farmhouse and then takes off. At the farmhouse, Herschel reveals to Rick his spouse and stepson were taken by the plague. His daughters, Maggie and Beth, made it. Rick remains dubious. All of a sudden, Maggie and Lori ride up to the farmhouse. Lori dashes inside to her son who is asleep and ill. Parents cry softly together. Otis and Shane, for their part, show up at the high school and check out the area. It's overrun with walkers for sure. Darl and Dale spoke of remaining behind with the RV in the event of Sophia's coming back. Dale then went on to state that if T-Dog did not get antibiotics, he would not make it. Darl scoffed, then rummaged through his motorcycle saddlebags and gave a sack of pills, which was evidently Merle's old supply. At the high school, Shane and Otis stumble upon some flares in the back of a cop car and hurl them into the parking lot to divert and lure the walkers away from the medical trailer. It works, and the two men hurry inside to get the medical supplies. They cram their backpacks and step out, to find the walkers waiting. Shane and Otis make a dash for it, but there are walkers at every corner. In a panic, they lock themselves inside the school and discover that they are seemingly trapped there. It seems they weren't able to manage to bring the supplies back to Herschel. Shane and Otis are portrayed running through the corridors of a school taken over by walkers. Rick consoles Lori saying Shane will bring back whatever Herschel needs to perform the surgery on Carl, yet Lori doesn't appear to be entirely certain. Darrell, camping with Andrea and Carol, who is crying, offers to take a stroll during the night to look for Sophia. Andrea proposes to accompany him, while Dale inquires whether this is a good idea, but nobody takes into account his opinion. At the school, Otis and Shane are stuck at the summit of the stands in the gymnasium. Otis tries one direction and Shane another executing a zombie at close range before falling several stories to the ground and limping away. At the Herschel farmhouse, T-Dog and Glenn have arrived and Maggie is on the porch, with Glenn seemingly enthralled. Herschel states that Carl may have to be operated on without a respirator as he is weakening. Lori then suggests that this may be how it was meant to be and Rick protests, saying that Carl should not be allowed to die, no matter the situation. Lori brings up the example of Jackie, who chose death and Rick is unable to provide a reason why Carl should stay alive. Shane faces imminent danger from roaming walkers until a gunshot breaks the silence and takes out some zombie heads, courtesy of Otis who has just saved Shane's life. Back at the farmhouse, Carl awakens and briefly speaks of the beautiful deer before becoming motionless. Lori gasps in shock as Carl experiences a strong convulsion. Rick, as always, extends his arm in support. Later, while creeping through the darkness of the woods, Darrell and Andrea locate a campsite with a hanging walker who tried to take his own life before turning, though not managing to shoot himself in the head. Animals have devoured the zombie's legs. Andrea is uncertain if she wants to continue living or if it's just a reflex and Darrell puts an arrow through the walker's head, in accordance to her wishes. At the farm residence, T-Dog receives medical attention from Patricia while Maggie spots Glenn praying. Maggie remarks that a lot of supplications have gone unanswered lately. Dale disregards his own advice and ventures out in search of Andrea and Darrell alone. He gets close to the side of the highway, then ceases, unsure of how to go on switch to Rick, who ardently states to his wife that Carl's moment of clarity is a sign. 
In other words, he concentrated on life rather than death. Shane and Otis persist in striving for survival outside the school. Herschel requires that Lori and Rick make a decision. Operate or permit Carl to pass. Carl is placed on a table and the doctor seizes his scalpel. Just before the first cut is made, Shane speeds up to the entrance in a pickup truck. Rick embraces his friend, who is evidently very disturbed. He confesses to having left the slower Otis behind in order to get back as soon as he did. On the road, Dale doesn't have to go into the woods, as Andrea and Daryl return without Sophia handing Andrea's gun to her. Back at the farmhouse, Maggie cries over the assumed death of Otis and the passing of all her relatives and friends. Glenn consoles her. Later, Herschel emerges onto the porch to inform Lori and Rick that Carl has undergone surgery and appears to have stabilized. This causes them to weep with joy at the news that their son is going to be alright. Herschel must now break the bad news to Patricia, who nearly faints at the realization that Otis did not make it back. Shane, watching from afar, heads into the recovery room to see Lori crying over Carl. Shane and Lori, two former lovers, make eye contact and Shane says nothing. He makes his way to the shower, where he notices a tuft of hair has been pulled out of his head. This triggers a flashback to the scene where Shane and Otis are limping away from a swarm of zombies. Shane then fires his last bullet at Otis, hitting him in the leg. Otis grabs hold of Shane, pulling out a tuft of his hair in the process. However, after a struggle Shane manages to break free and flee, leaving Otis to be devoured by the walkers. This enables Shane to save Carl, but at what cost? We get a glimpse of Shane, his face fogged over by the mirror he just used to shave his head in an effort to erase the last reminder of his tussle with Otis. Not a great situation. At the Herschel homestead, everything is peaceful. Carl was still recuperating, being taken care of by Rick and Lori. Dale was ecstatic that the boy was alright, and Rick made sure to thank Shane for his bravery. Shane, however, shudders at the recollection of how he managed to get away from the undead. His guilt increases when Herschel requests him to give a eulogy for Otis. Shane spins a tale of Otis being a hero who gladly gave up his life to save Carl. It was a convincing story. Subsequently, the entire group focused their attention on the missing Sophia, looking at maps and the like. Herschel politely asked that the new arrivals don't carry guns on his property, which Shane didn't like, but Rick agreed. Maggie then offered to go to the drugstore to get medical supplies, with Rick suggesting that Glenn accompany her. Lori then gave Glenn a note, asking for a certain item from the store and asking that he keep this between the two of them. Later, there was an awkward moment between Lori and Shane. Shane then taught Andrea how to disassemble the weapons before storing them all in the RV. Herschel, in the meantime, reminded Rick of something with a firm tone. Dale and T-Dog are occupied with pumping water out of the well when Dale notices a sound from the depths. At the bottom of the well is a bloated, ghastly zombie. It's unknown if the walker has already contaminated the liquid, but blowing its brains out will. But how to get it out? The crew lowers a canned ham, yet the zombie isn't interested. Everyone gazes at Glenn, the smallest of the group. The scene shifts to Glenn with a rope tied around his stomach. He is lowered into the well toward the growling, bleached zombie. Suddenly, the pipe to which the rope is tied snaps, causing Glenn to drop. T-Dog grabs the rope and holds on. Soon after, the group pulls Glenn out of the well. Safe. Even better, Glenn was able to get a noose around the walker's middle and hook it. So, as it turns out, the idiotic strategy actually succeeded. The zombie can now be brought out. Darl, in the meantime, walks to a decomposing house with his crossbow ready. He discovers scraps of recently devoured food and, in the closet, evidence of a makeshift bed. Could Sophia have been here? Back at the farm, the survivors haul the zombie out of the well, but the squirming thing gets stuck on the lip. They pull together, and the zombie splits in half. Its lower body drops into the water beneath in a cascade of blood and entrails. Its upper half snarls and spits on the ground above until T-Dog smashes it in the face with a blunt object. The well will have to be closed off, after all. I must return to the forest, where Shane educates Andrea on the complexities of firing a gun. Maggie and Glenn ride inside city limits on horseback. Maggie is silent. She remains greatly disconcerted by the sight of the bloated corpse cut in half and then battered. Glenn comments that this group is rather numb to such gruesome results. They reach the drugstore and Glenn digs into his pocket to present Lori's secret note. He locates the feminine hygiene section and chooses what he needs to get. Later, Rick calls Herschel into action, requesting the head of the family to let his collection of disheveled survivors stay at the farm. Rick states that he just has the welfare of his son in mind. Rick does not mention the matters Herschel refuses to talk about and expresses gratitude to the elderly man for accommodating him in the middle. Going back to the farm, Glenn appears wounded, but is quickly intercepted by Lori. Glenn gives her the package he collected and does not utter a word. Neither does Lori. Darl arrives back from his search for Sophia, bearing a Cherokee rose which he presents to Carol. He explains that the Native Americans believed that the flower blossomed as a way to provide solace to mothers grieving the passing of their children while they traversed the Trail of Tears. Carol is touched and sheds tears of gratitude. Meanwhile, Carl awakes from a deep sleep to discover his father sitting beside his bed. Rick apologizes for not telling Carl that Sophia is missing and Carl understands. 
To show his appreciation, Rick hands his son his sheriff's hat. Later, Lori gazes as her husband undoes his badge and shirt after yet another taxing day. She ponders saying something, yet decides against it. She goes outside to a secluded area and takes out the package Glenn retrieved for her from the pharmacy. It's a pregnancy test. Lori squats down, urinates on it, and holds it up to view the result. It's positive. Overwhelmed with fear of what this might mean, she sobs. Later, Lori stirs in the tent outside the Herschel farm. Carol suggests preparing dinner for the Herschel family. The survivors think up a plan to look for Sophia. Dale and T-Dog joke around with Daro, who says he once saw a chupacabra. Daro points out that the dead are now walking the earth, so anything is possible. Later, Rick and Shane look for Sophia and just about the girls Shane slept with in high school. Shane suddenly turns serious. He discloses to Rick that they are risking their lives and wasting their time searching for a girl who is likely dead. Rick suffers from the guilt of it all and has no intention to call off the search. Darrell takes a ride astride his horse through the woods. Stopping atop a ridge, he surveys the riverbank and spies a form in the mire. He cautiously goes near and finds a doll and some garments. The animal is shortly spooked by a snake and tosses Darrell, who goes tumbling down a steep hill. The experienced hunter ends up hurt and profusely bleeding, having unintentionally pierced himself with one of his arrows. He manages to tie off the wound, then limps to shore with difficulty. Meanwhile, Lori speaks in confidence to Glenn. She has kept her lips sealed about the matter. Upon his return, Rick draws his wife aside. She suggests that he remain steadfast. He is then called over by Herschel, who was unaware that Darrell had told him. Also, Herschel is upset that Jimmy joined the search crew without his knowledge. He proposes that he take charge of his people and Rick take charge of his. Rick silently consents. Darrell is lying inert on the riverbank. Suddenly a vision of his brother Merle appears and scolds him for risking his life for a little girl and not looking for his kin. After the illusion of Merle vanishes, he is replaced by a zombie trying to gnaw at his leg. Darrell reacts quickly, stabbing it in the eye with a piece of wood. When a second walker appears, he painfully rips the arrow from his side, arms his crossbow and shoots it in the head. Darrell then opts to heed his invisible sibling's suggestion and gets serious about making it out alive. He eats a raw squirrel before crafting a necklace of zombie ears. Merle shows up not long after. Somehow, Darrell makes it to the summit of the ridge, then vanishes. When Herschel finds Rick's associates chowing down in the kitchen, he is livid. Glenn speaks to Dale for counsel about Maggie, confessing that he and Maggie were intimate. Dale is perturbed, believing Herschel would be beyond angry if he found out. Suddenly, Andrea sees a walker stumbling from the tree line a few hundred yards away and takes aim. It is Darrell, drenched in blood. Andrea pulls the trigger, and Darrell collapses. Andrea's satisfaction turns to terror when she understands that she shot Darrell. The other survivors drag Darrell inside, who has been nicked in the head. Later, Herschel tends to Darrell, who reveals that he discovered Sophia's plaything in the creek bed. Herschel has had enough, his horse is missing and the antibiotics are going fast. Shane concurs with Herschel. Rick storms off. Dale tells a distressed Andrea that she should not be so hard on herself. Andrea weakly manages to smile. Later, Herschel's people and Rick's people dine together inside the farmhouse. Nobody is talking much. Maggie and Glenn are exchanging notes like school kids, signifying they may reconcile that evening. Carol delivers dinner to Darrell. After dinner, Maggie peruses the note from Glenn, ever done it in a hayloft. Maggie looks alarmed and hurries away. Glenn moves towards the huge barn on the property. It is locked, so he ascends to the hayloft and enters. Inside, more than a dozen zombies are being held on the ground floor. Maggie follows. At Herschel's farm, as morning comes and the survivors do their chores, Patricia goes stealthily to the chicken coop, snaps the legs of a chicken and carries it off to the large barn. Inside, she hurls a bag of incapacitated chickens to the zombies below. While Glenn, who knows Herschel's secret, is observing the barn through binoculars, Maggie comes up. Following that, Andrea brings a book to the injured Darrell and apologizes for accidentally shooting him. Subsequently, Glenn talks to Lori about another secret. All Lori needs is for Glenn to keep quiet. Carl then queries Shane to demonstrate how to shoot. Shane, becoming fond of the boy again, speaks to Rick and Lori, who agree. Then Shane notices that Carl has a loaded pistol in his belt. An angry Lori hears from Dale how Carl wanted entrance to the RV looking for a walkie. Rick is in favor of the request and Lori isn't. Glenn nervously tells Dale, there are zombies in the barn and Lori's pregnant. So, Dale speaks to Herschel about it and Herschel requests for Dale to stay silent if he wants to be of assistance. Andrea is aiming at a piece of wood affixed to a tree limb. Shane swings the wood, making it a moving target and starts to rebuke Andrea, showing her that she will have to shoot when she's in a state of distress and anxiety. Andrea is overwhelmed, backs away and leaves. Then, Lori tells Rick something she learned from Herschel. He intends to take the group away from the farm. Rick explains that he is attempting to persuade Herschel to let them stay, but it could take a while. He tells Lori to give Herschel some space. Shane pursues Andrea, who is mad. He offers his regrets and then tells her about Sophia. Would she like to accompany him? She agrees. Back at the farm, Dale sees Lori doubled over, feeling sick. 
When he reveals that he knows her secret, she admits she can't bear the thought of bringing a child into this post-apocalyptic world, even though it is likely Rick's baby and not Shane's. Lori then goes to Glenn and apologizes for burdening him with her secret. She requests that he ride into town on horseback to get her some pregnancy-related things. Maggie is mad at Glenn for telling Dale, as well as his sympathy for the walkers, including her mom who is among them. Inside the pharmacy, Maggie and Glenn are looking for medicine when a zombie reaches through the shelves and grabs Mac. Glenn shoves the walker away and kills it with multiple blows. Maggie embraces Glenn, who she is now fine with killing the undead. When Maggie returns to the farm, she throws a packet of morning after pills at Lori and tells her to get her own medication the next time, instead of putting Glenn in danger. Lori is stunned into silence. Later, Shane and Andrea drive to a suburban neighborhood looking for Sophia. They go into a house where it looks like the family had barricaded themselves and tried to fight the zombies. Soon, they are attacked. As they run back to their car to escape, Shane shoots a number of the walkers in the head while Andrea fumbles with her gun. After a few misfires, she hits her stride, shooting zombie after zombie in the head. When Glenn and Lori talk back at the farm, Glenn wonders if the abortion pills will even work. He gives Lori prenatal vitamins as an alternative. Andrea and Shane are in a car heading back to the farm. Shane brings the car to a halt and things become very physical. Afterward, the two new lovers return to the farm and break the news to Carol, no Sophia in sight. Not a fool, Dale perceives something different between Shane and Andrea. This leads Dale to suggest that Shane leave town. Dale even hints that the details of Otis's death are mysterious, recalling the time Shane trained his gun on Rick. Shane states his love for Rick then cautions Dale to be careful when making accusations. Dale receives the message, scared out of his wits. Shane merely grins, and moves away. Eventually, Rick enters his wife's tent and notices the pills. He moves closer to his wife. Lori tells him she took the morning after pills, but threw them up. Rick is livid. He says he can't deal with the lies. Rick states he is aware. He has known all along, and he comprehends. Lori had thought her husband was dead. Lori and Rick, seemingly separated, but standing near each other, gaze out at their fate at the farm. At the Herschel farm, the survivors consume their midday meal in a camp outside the main residence. Shane gazes into the barn and discovers more than a dozen zombies inside. Furious, Shane demands they leave at once. As Darrell, Rick, and Carol debate Sophia's whereabouts, Shane fumes, believing her to be dead. Later, Maggie breaks an egg over Glenn's head after he unknowingly divulges a secret. Carl, however, refuses to leave without Sophia. Lori embraces her optimistic son. Despite being shot, Darrell readies a horse to go searching when Carol insists he rest. Rick pleads his case to Herschel, divulging that Lori is expecting. Herschel remains steadfast. Later, Rick informs Shane of the pregnancy and that they need to stay. Shane struggles to express joy. Maggie persuades her father to let the survivors remain. Jimmy enters the kitchen. Herschel immediately seeks Rick's help. Shane confronts Lori about her pregnancy and Rick, claiming to have saved her life four times more than Rick. Lori rebuffs him. Later, Herschel leads Rick to the edge of the river where two walkers are mired in muck. He challenges Rick to capture, not kill, the zombies. Rick agrees and Herschel insists on his rules being followed. Glenn is finally able to speak to Mac and shows her understanding by kissing him. Dale is in the woods when Shane finds him with the guns. Dale lowers his weapon and Shane takes them. Shane distributes the weapons to the survivors, announcing they will take out the zombies in the barn. Rick and Herschel return with walkers at the end of long sticks and Shane goes ballistic. He shoots a walker in the body and the head to illustrate how people are injured when that happens. He then throws open the barn door to reveal Sophia. Carol rushes to her daughter but is restrained by Darrell. Rick shoots Sophia in the head. Rick lowers his weapon following the shooting of unfortunate, zombified Sophia. Carol sobs behind him. Herschel cries. And Dale is in a state of shock looking at the multitude of recognizable walkers littered across the area. All in all, everybody is having a hard time. At that moment, Annette, Herschel's walker wife, awakens and attacks her own daughter, Beth. Andrea grabs a scythe nearby and sticks it in the zombie's cranium. Just another day in post-apocalyptic bliss. Shane, of course, is enraged. He pins the blame on Herschel for putting them in danger by concealing Sophia in the barn while the rest of the group search the woods for her. Herschel denies it, claiming Otis, who is now deceased, could have discovered Sophia first. Shane moves closer to assault the elder and is promptly slapped by Maggie. Astonished for a moment, Shane then directs his rage towards Rick, calling the sheriff as misled and naive as Herschel for ever supposing Sophia was alive. Glenn later inquires from Maggie if she knew Sophia was in the barn. Maggie is insulted he even had to ask. Glenn contemplates whether his posse of survivors can ever move on. Outside, Rick whispers to Lori that Herschel wants them all off his land, or Shane at least. Rick is castigating himself for chasing a ghost in a forest. Regardless of how hard Rick tries, people still end up dead. Once more, he doubts his own authority. On the other side of the farmhouse, Shane notices Dale gazing intently at him. Shane instantly becomes defensive and, simultaneously, hostile. Shane inquires what Dale has done to protect the group. Dale remains quiet. Later, Andrea and Darrell query Carol if she wants to bury Sophia. 
Carol declines, saying the corpse near the barn is no longer her little girl. Sophia died a long time ago. Carol utters without making eye contact with the survivors. Inside the farmhouse, Herschel goes into his bedroom and takes out a hidden flask. Former demons have apparently returned to join the new horrors. Downstairs, Beth collapses at the sink, seemingly from shock. Maggie searches for Herschel but he is nowhere to be seen. However, the group does find a flask. Rick volunteers to go to the town bar to find the old man. Later, a shocked-looking Carol meanders out of the woods. She has been crying. Shane finds the sorrowful mother and leads her to a water pump. He tenderly washes Carol's arms and hands. Dale, meanwhile, alerts Lori that Shane is dangerous. Rick and Glenn drive into town looking for Herschel. Glenn reveals that Maggie has professed her love. Glenn doesn't dare believe it. Glenn didn't reciprocate and feels remorseful. Back at the farmhouse, Beth has gotten worse. Lori goes to Darrell, requesting him to head into town and help Rick and Glenn. Darrell, however, refuses. After the Sophia incident, he is done searching for people. He is done caring, seemingly. Rick and Glenn find Herschel alone inside the bar. The old man is holding a large drink. Herschel says that Beth just needs to grieve her mother, something she was refused when Herschel put his undead family members in the barn. He blames himself. Herschel then pours himself another stiff drink. He too, has lost faith. Back at the farmhouse, Lori decides to take action. She hops in the car and speeds into town. When she looks down to examine a map, a walker wanders into the road. Lori screams and yanks the wheel. The car slams into the walker and then flies into a ditch, landing upside down. Back at the bar, Rick explains that he promised Maggie that he would bring Herschel home. Rick attempts to keep his feelings in check. Rick tells Herschel that the people back at the farmhouse need someone to follow even if Rick and Herschel no longer trust themselves. Just then, the door to the bar flings open and two strangers appear. Dave and Tommy introduce themselves, and everybody shares a drink except for Herschel. Dave salutes their respective deceased loved ones and states that he has come all the way from Philly. Rick explains that his group had decided to go to Fort Benning. Dave scowls, saying he and Tommy encountered a soldier from Fort Benning in their travels. Dave then inquires where Rick and the gang are living. Rick suddenly becomes secretive. He says they're all part of a larger group that is out surveying. Obviously, Dave and Tommy are not being welcomed into the group. Dave then wonders why Rick and Herschel can't make space for a few more. Both Rick and Herschel apologize, but hold their ground. Tommy becomes angry. Rick puts his hand on his gun. The atmosphere is tense. Dave wonders what he and friend should do. Dave then reaches for his own gun, and Rick fires. He shoots Dave and Tommy. Both collapse to the ground. Dead. Rick doesn't appear the least bit sorrowful. Lying prone in the overturned car, Lori is unconscious. A walker gnaws at the glass, attempting to access the injured person within. Lori stirs, screaming. At the same time, Rick stands over the corpses of the two men he killed in the bar, Dave and Tony. He confiscates their weapons. Suddenly, he hears a car outside. Dave's and Tony's friends have arrived, seeking them. In a hurry, Rick, Glenn and Herschel conceal themselves. At the wreck, the walker has managed to break in. Lori desperately searches for a sharp object and plunges it into the walker's eye, then scrambles out of the car and is attacked by more walkers. She grabs her gun, kills two of them and the last one after a struggle. Dave's and Tony's pals go back to the bar, attempting to get in, but Glenn blocks the door. Rick decides to reveal himself. The windows of the building shatter in a volley of gunfire. Dave's and Tony's companions are not willing to forgive and forget. Back at the farmhouse. The survivors realize that Lori is missing, so they look for her. Darrell reveals that he refused to look for Rick when Lori asked. Shane then jumps in a truck. He soon finds the wrecked car and the dead walkers. But Lori is nowhere to be seen. Rick tries to talk down the attackers. Glenn notices movement outside and fires at the shadow. Rick orders him to try for the car. Herschel covers him. Shots are fired and one of the attackers falls, moaning in pain. Just then, a truck pulls up. The driver warns the attackers that walkers are coming and that it's time to go, but a young man jumps to get to the truck, missteps, and impales his leg on a fence. The driver takes off, unaware of his friend's screams. Rick and Herschel inspect the wound as walkers eat the other wounded attacker. Rick decides that they cannot abandon the young man, even though he had been trying to kill them. He performs an impromptu surgery, but they have to hurry because the walkers are coming. At the last moment, Rick takes the young man's leg and pushes upward. Shane finds Lori walking up the road and lies telling her that Rick is safe at the farm. She agrees to go back. Carol confronts Darrell and he insults her. Shane and Lori return and Lori is furious when she discovers Rick is not there. Shane defends his lie, saying he had to protect the baby. Later, Rick, Glenn and Herschel return to the farm with Randall. They explain that they could not leave him behind. Rick and Shane draw up to an intersection of a deserted street. Rick seeks to have a discussion, and not about Randall, who is tied up in the back. Rick mentions what he heard about the school incident. Shane explains that he was obligated to do what he could to assure Carl's survival. Rick states he is no longer a good man, and he will do anything to guard his family, including keeping them away from Shane. He then warns Shane that the only way they can move ahead is if Shane acknowledges that Lori doesn't have feelings for him, 
and the baby is exclusively Rick's. Later, Lori brings Beth a tray of food. Beth, still healing, wonders how Lori can even contemplate bringing a child into the world. Lori, not for the first or last time, storms out of the room. Both Rick and Shane keep going. Rick looks for a place to drop Randall in order to give the stranger a fair shot. Shane keeps his thoughts to himself. They eventually come across a vehicle depot. A walker shows up and Rick prevents Shane from shooting. To save ammo and retain a low profile, he cuts his own hand and smears the blood on a chain-link fence. The walker rushes, banging into the fence, and Rick stabs it with a knife. This is the new approach for one-on-one -on -one confrontations. The two survivors search the area. Shane finds walkers who, oddly, don't have bite marks. Shane is uncertain. The two then extract Randall from the back of the car. The young man's hands are bound behind his back. Back at the farm, Lori pays another visit to Beth, who is crying. She says life is pointless. Lori then heads downstairs with the tray of untouched food and notices the knife is missing. Lori runs back upstairs and demands Beth return the knife. Beth wordlessly hands over the knife. Back at the depot, Rick and Shane drag Randall to the center of a parking lot and then turn around and start to walk away. Shane and Rick stop. Randall explains that Maggie didn't know him, but he went to school with her. Rick appears to be changing his mind. Shane pulls out his gun and points it. At the last second, Rick hits Shane in the arm. The bullet misses Randall by a foot. This doesn't please Shane. Shane asks Rick in relation to Lori and Carl. And then the tension escalates. The two former friends are now exchanging punches. While they fight, Randall sees Rick's knife lying on the pavement. He crawls toward it. Rick, meanwhile, temporarily gets the better of Shane. Shane grabs a large wrench and throws it at the sheriff. The projectile barely misses Rick and smashes into a window. Moments later, Walker after Walker come out. At the farm, Maggie has been told of her sister's near-suicide attempt. Maggie is angry, asking Beth if she really has given up. Downstairs in the kitchen, Andrea and Lori overhear the two sisters arguing upstairs. Soon, Andrea and Lori are quarreling too. Lori claims that Andrea doesn't contribute to the group, that the men are more than capable of handling Walker watch without her. Andrea calls Lori selfish, pointing out that her husband and son made it through the zombie apocalypse and she has no concept of what the rest have experienced. How dare she tell Beth what to do? She should just stay positive, Andrea says meanly before leaving the kitchen. Randall, in the meantime, has grabbed the knife and frees his hands just as a walker draws near. Randall stabs the walker in the head. Rick, meanwhile, is about to be overwhelmed by walkers. He manages to get his gun into one of the walker's mouths and fires through it into another's head. A third shot kills off the group. Back at the farm, Maggie and Beth keep arguing. Beth suggests that the two sisters end their lives together. She doesn't believe they can be safe. Rick, meanwhile, spots Randall amidst the chaos of walkers and notices an exit through a nearby fence. He then notices Shane, who has barricaded himself inside an old school bus. Walkers are surrounding the bus. Rick then makes a decision, he is leaving with Randall and without Shane. From inside the bus, Shane gazes as Rick and Randall escape through the fence. On the way out of the depot, Rick stops near the bodies of the two walkers who don't appear to have bite marks. He examines them, thinking. Shane, meanwhile, is seemingly done for. The walkers are nearly through the doors. Suddenly, he hears a car. Randall is driving and Rick is hanging out of the passenger side window shooting, picking off zombies. Shane grins in relief and runs for the back of bus, kicking open the door and leaping on the top of the moving car. All three escape together. Back at the farm, Maggie confronts Andrea, who is delighted to hear that Beth stopped herself and had made a decision to live. Lori's face drops. She doesn't think Andrea was totally wrong, but she also doesn't speak up to protect her. At last, Shane and Rick have another conversation with Randall bound and gagged in the back of the car. Rick tells Shane one more time that Lori and Carl are not his, and that, if he can accept this, then they can live in harmony. Rick gives Shane a gun. They drive back to the farm. Shane remains silent. He gazes out the window and sees a distant walker stumbling through a field, alone. Randall is seated inside the barn with his hands bound behind him as Darrell grills him, wielding his fists to get answers from the youth. Darrell needs to know about the men Randall was traveling with. Through his tears and begging, Randall discloses to him that the group had a lot of ammunition, as well as women and children in their company. He also mentions that he is not like the others who had violated two young girls. Afterward, Darrell returns to camp and reports to the group that there are 30 men with powerful weaponry and no regard for women. Rick is alarmed and declares that this threat must be eliminated. Dale is against this and says that they cannot take a life without a process. He emphasizes the need to retain their humanity. Andrea reluctantly agrees to watch over Randall on Dale's behalf. Shane then talks to Andrea, and she gets the impression that the group won't be going ahead with the execution. At that moment, Randall hears the conversation and catches sight of Carl in the rafters of the barn. Suddenly, Shane appears and reprimands Carl for getting too close to the criminal. Later, Lori brings up the topic of Randall to her husband, and she expresses her support for whatever action Rick decides to take. Outside, Carol speaks to Carl, telling him that they will see Sophia again in heaven. Carl retorts that heaven is a lie, and anyone who believes in it is a fool. 
Carol then goes to Rick and Lori, complaining that everyone ignores her or thinks she's mad. In a rage, she storms off. Rick then has a stern talk with Carl, who asks if that is the reason why Rick is killing Randall, to right a mistake. Dale tries to convince Daryl and Herschel to spare Randall. Herschel will leave it up to Rick's decision, but he does want the intruder gone from his daughters. Meanwhile, Carl strays from camp and finds a gun in a motorcycle saddlebag. He takes it and continues to explore, eventually coming across a walker stuck in the mud. He starts to throw stones at it. Dale then talks to Shane, hoping to make him reconsider. He admits that they don't agree on much, but he wants to discuss it like two civilized men. Shane states that if the group decides to keep Randall alive, he won't argue. But, he adds, if Randall hurts anyone, the blame will be on Dale's shoulders. Inside the house, Herschel comforts Beth, who recently tried to take her own life. Glenn enters the room and finds himself in a conversation with Herschel, who gifts him a family heirloom pocket watch. Glenn is astonished and manages to utter a simple thank you. Carl drew nearer to the walker, he produced his firearm and pointed it. Just then, the walker managed to free its leg from the mud and lunged at Carl, who lost the gun in the process. The boy barely managed to get away and dashed into the woods. By sundown at the farm, it was time to decide Randall's destiny. Everyone gathered in Herschel's living room, including Carl, who kept quiet about his confrontation with the walker. Shane, of course, wanted to execute Randall, and everybody else did, even Glenn, to Dale's dismay. Dale said they were no better than the men they feared. He told his companions that if they killed this young man, then civilization was truly gone. Right at the last moment, Andrea sided with Dale. We should search for another solution, she said. But no one else said anything. It seemed Randall was a goner. Soon after, Rick, Darrell and Shane hauled Randall into the barn. Shane blindfolded the boy, who began to sob. Randall begged for his life. Just as Rick was about to shoot, Carl came into the barn. Do it, Dad, Carl declared. At that, Rick lowered his gun. He wouldn't do it. Rick and Carl then returned to camp. Later, Rick informed Lori that Carl wanted to watch. I couldn't do it, Rick said. Lori embraced her husband. Meanwhile, Dale went out into Herschel's field and came across a sick cow lying on the ground. Just then, the walker that Carl had been taunting showed up and fell on Dale. Dale shouted and Rick and Darrell ran to him. Darrell stabbed the walker in the head, but it was too late. Dale's stomach had been ripped open. Andrea cried as Dale slowly died. Herschel said there was nothing that could be done. Rick took out his gun and was about to end Dale's suffering when Darrell snatched the weapon instead. Sorry, brother, Darrell uttered before shooting. Carl, meanwhile, regarded the dead walker and realized it was the one he had taunted, but not killed. His face twisted and he rushed to his mom. Many countenances of sorrow as Dale is laid to rest. Rick delivers his eulogy and affirms that the group is broken. He said the best way to respect him is to fix it. We are going to prove him wrong. Rick wanted to respect Dale by bringing back humanity for the survivors. This funeral in Herschel's field is intercut with a scene of Shane, Andrea, Darrell, and T-Dog hunting and viciously killing a horde of zombies. Herschel later invites all the survivors, except Shane, into his home and barn. He laments that he should have done it sooner. The subject of Randall is brought up again. Shane gets enraged when Rick states that he and Darrell will transport the prisoner off the farm and release him. Rick is unwavering in his decision. He then inquires Andrea to remain with Herschel and defend the camp when he goes off with Randall. Andrea quickly understood his intention. You want me to watch over Shane? Andrea inquires. She is hesitant, yet finally consents. Carl then moves toward Shane and admits to stealing a gun from Darrell's motorcycle. Carl returns the gun then recounts how he was unable to shoot the walker that killed Dale. Carl blames himself. Shane's response is to persuade the boy to keep the gun so he can protect himself. Maggie, at the same time, offers Glenn to stay in her room. Glenn wavers, then declines. He still doesn't want to get close. Shane is constructing a bird's nest in Herschel's windmill when Lori comes up. Lori thanks Shane for getting her and Carl away from town on the night the world ended. Lori then turns away from a teary-eyed Shane. Shane later speaks to Rick and tells him about Carl's confession. Rick says that Lori will have to handle it as he and Darrell are about to go on a drive with Randall. Shane disagrees, wondering out loud if the Randall business is more important than Carl. Shane then volunteers to accompany Darrell so Rick can stay behind. Rick rejects, obviously not believing that Shane can be trusted to let Randall go. However, Rick does choose to delay his mission and talk to the boy. He finds Carl sitting in the barn loft. He then hands Carl a gun, the same gun Carl took from Darrell's motorcycle. Rick then tells his son the hard truth. There is no regular childhood for Carl. The boy needs to mature rapidly and be prepared to protect himself. Later, Shane enters the barn and takes a seat across from Randall. The former deputy seems to be losing control. He points a gun at Randall, then lowers it. Shane then notices that Randall's wrists are bloody. The prisoner has been trying desperately to escape. Shane propels Randall, who is trussed up, through the woods. He goes on to explain that he is fed up with Rick and the others, and wants to join Randall's folk. The lad is excited, saying that his people can be a bit wild but they're a decent bunch of guys. The twosome go behind a tree and a shriek and a crunch is heard from Randall. Shane then returns without Randall, 
and rams head first into the tree. At the farm, T-Dog finds out Randall is missing and informs Rick just as Shane emerges from the wood, bleeding severely. Shane asserts that Randall snuck up on him, hit him in the face, grabbed his gun and escaped into the woods. Right away, Rick organizes a hunting party of Shane, Daryl and Glenn and orders everyone else to remain indoors. The group then split up, Rick and Shane, Daryl and Glenn. When night falls, Daryl deters back to the beginning and finds two tracks. The experienced tracker doesn't believe Shane's story. They come across a walker in the woods and after killing it, discover that it is Randall. Daryl examines the body and concludes that Randall's neck is broken, with no bites or scratches. The two are confused as to why Randall turned into a walker. Rick and Shane walk into a clearing when Shane suddenly stops. He pulls his gun. Rick realizes he is in a trap. Shane declares that he will tell the group that Randall shot Rick. It won't be easy. But Lori and Carl will recover, Shane states. They've gotten over you before. Rick replies, are you going to kill me in cold blood? I know you. You won't be able to live with this. Shane then lowers his gun and dares Rick to shoot him. Rick declines. Shane tells his former friend that this is why Lori and Carl are better off with him. Rick slowly reaches for his gun, saying that he is going to give it to Shane. Rick moves closer to Shane, holding out the butt of his gun. Shane grabs the gun and as he does, Rick seizes a blade from his belt and lunges towards him. The blade is stuck in Shane's stomach. Rick lies on top of Shane. Rick sobs and cries as he holds his friend until he passes away. He stands over Shane when Carl appears. He saw his dad murder Shane. Shots of zombies eating appear, suggesting that Shane will become a walker. Carl holds up his gun, pointing it at his father. Shane rises. Now a walker, Shane stands and rushes quickly towards Rick. Before he can reach Rick, Carl fires a fatal headshot and kills him. Elsewhere, a horde of walkers pick up the gunshot. It looks like they are close to the farm. As Rick and Carl stand by Shane's lifeless body, the horde has noticed them and is heading their way, unnoticed. In the big city, eaters of the dead are instantly distracted by the noise of a helicopter flying overhead, and they stand in unison, trudging in the direction of the sound. Later, we witness a massive group of them, hundreds strong, slowly marching down the highway through a clearing. The throng comes to a stop in front of a wooden fence, but the sheer number of them causes the barricade to collapse. It's night now and a gunshot echoes, the one that ultimately killed Shane. The walkers turn and head for Herschel's farm, inside the house. Everyone is in a state of panic. Daryl and Glenn return first. Lori begs them to go out again and find Rick and Shane. Meanwhile, Rick and Carl are walking back and Rick stops to explain it all to his son, though they soon spot a large number of the undead coming from all sides. The father and son run to the barn, barricading themselves inside. At the house, Lori realizes Carl is gone. Everyone loads up their weapons and watches as the zombies surround the barn. Daryl asks if they're really going to take on such a huge crowd. Inside the barn, Rick pours gasoline on the ground and then opens the door, luring the zombies in. He sprints for the ladder as Carl throws a lighter into the mass, setting about 20 of them ablaze. Outside, Maggie and T-Dog drive cars around the zombies while Glenn and Andrea shoot from the windows. Daryl circulates on his motorcycle, killing off walker after walker. Jimmy then drives up in the RV, giving Rick and Carl the chance to jump on top. Unfortunately, some of the walkers get into the RV, and Jimmy is killed. Again, Rick and Carl escape. While on the porch, Carol convinces Lori to flee with her, Beth, and Patricia. However, Patricia has her throat ripped out by a fast-moving walker, and Lori and the others jump into the back of T-Dog's pickup, leaving Andrea behind, apparently taken down by a walker. Maggie and Glenn, being trapped in a car, were overwhelmed by the sheer number of the living dead. Consequently, Glenn convinced Maggie to step on the accelerator and speed away. In the meantime, Herschel was standing on the porch, shooting his shotgun until it was empty, just when the old man was about to be attacked. Rick came out of nowhere and put down the walker. They both jumped into a truck and drove away. On the other side of the house, Daryl noticed Carol running from a horde of zombies and rescued her on the back of his motorcycle. Andrea, surprisingly, was alive and fighting. The other survivors were divided. When the sun rose, Maggie was too overwhelmed with grief to keep driving, so Glenn took over the wheel. To comfort Maggie, he declared his love for her. Rick, Carl and Herschel stopped at the pre-arranged rendezvous spot, however, no one was there. Carl begged his father to return for Lori. Herschel suggested that Rick take his son to safety and stay himself in case the others showed up. Rick declined, yelling at Herschel to have some faith. Indeed, Daryl and Carol soon appeared, followed by Glenn and Maggie. At last, T-Dog, Lori and Beth arrived. Everyone was reunited. Lori, Rick and Carl hugged each other in relief. The posse briefly deliberates about returning for Andrea, who seemingly no one spotted die. But Rick rejects the proposal. Even if Andrea possibly survived, she would not be in the vicinity of the farm. At that moment, Andrea dashes through the woods with zombies in pursuit. Her ammunition is almost depleted, so she takes a moment to evaluate her alternatives. They are few. Rick's ride then runs out of fuel. He orders the gang to stay for the night and look for gas tomorrow. Rick makes a desperate speech, announcing they will not be splitting up again. Plus, they need a place to stay, heal and construct a life. The others are unconvinced. Daryl then brings up that Shane killed Randall. 
He inquires who killed Shane. Neither Rick nor anyone else answers. Nonetheless, when Daryl emphasizes that Randall became a zombie without being bitten, Rick speaks up. We all have it, he murmurs. At the CDC, Jenner informed me. We are all carrying it. Glenn inquires Rick why he didn't tell them weeks ago. That's not your decision, Glenn declares. Rick angrily retorts. I thought it was for the best not to let people know. Rick is attempting to take control, although it's not easy. Later, Rick confesses to Lori that he murdered Shane. I gave him plenty of chances and he kept pushing me away, Rick states. He then reveals to his mate that Shane changed, affirming Jenner's hypothesis, and Carl ended Shane. Lori suddenly moves away. She stares at Rick with hatred in her eyes. Andrea is still going, having only a small knife which she employs to take down a couple of walkers prior to being killed. It looks like the end, until the walker's head is severed and a figure in a black hood is seen a few feet away, with a bloody sword in hand and two walkers whose arms have been removed, connected by a chain. That night, while the survivors are clustered around a fire, Carol warns Daryl that Rick may be hazardous. Maggie also recommends to Glenn they should chance it independently and leave. Outraged, Rick informs the group that he killed his best friend for them, and how can they contemplate abandoning now? Conceding that Shane was going to murder him, Rick goes on to state that if they stay, they have to accept his rule. This isn't a democracy any longer, Rick declares. Lori embraces a crying Carl, with the rest of the group staring at Rick. The scene then pans out to display a high-walled facility in the distance, a few miles away from the camp. If you liked the video, please press the like button to encourage us to make more recaps.